Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting and Secretary General Dr. Yasser Al Nasser then made the following statement. The cabinet decided to refer the report of the National Audit Office for the fiscal year 2019-2020 to the Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to supervise the verification of observation and recommendations contained therein. The Deputy Premier expressed thanks to all ministries and government agencies that did not receive substantive observation in the report, which reflects their commitment to the laws and regulations. The Cabinet praised the role of the banking sector in the Kingdom in supporting the national economy and the rapid development witnessed by the banking industry over the past 100 years, making Bahrain an important centre for financial markets in the region and a leading destination for major financial institutions around the world. The Cabinet also welcomed the ranking of the Kingdom as a leading Arab country in the Basel Index to combat money laundering, which reflects the robustness of the frameworks adopted in the Kingdom and combating money laundering and the financing of terrorism and the government's strict procedures to establish the principle of transparency. The ranking is also an indication of the strength of the Kingdom's legislation. The Cabinet then expressed sincere condolences over the deaths and injuries caused by the unfortunate earthquake that hurt the Turkish state Izmir, to which their deceased eternal peace and their injured a speedy recovery. On the other hand, the cabinet condemned the terrorist attack in the French city of Nice and strongly denounced such terrorist crimes that contradict the teachings of all religions and human principles. The cabinet approved the state budget for the fiscal year 2021 to 2022 and referred it as a draft law to the representatives council. The Cabinet took into account the social support for citizens in need, improving government services performance and enhancing its effectiveness. The Cabinet discussed the basis and standards for people with limited income through a memo referred by the Minister of Labour and Social Development. The Cabinet discussed the regulations for registry and renewal of small vessels and the procedures to obtain a license for them through a report presented by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications. The Cabinet discussed subjecting commercial companies established by a royal order to the com Commercial Companies Law, which includes 21 companies and amending their articles of association and regulations. The Cabinet discussed a draft law regarding defining the form of companies that clubs may take over, the system for converting clubs into companies, and the rules governing their work and the mechanism for monitoring them. The Cabinet approved a number of proposals on caring for cancer patients at public hospitals, the National Strategy for Human Rights, collecting donations for national efforts who are combating COVID-19 and supporting for people working abroad. The Cabinet then discussed the outcomes of the 75th session of the Executive Office of the Council of Arab Ministers of Social Affairs. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated the personal representative of His Majesty the King and the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the victory of Bahrain One Racing Team in the NHRA World Championship for Pro Mod Cars, which was held in Las Vegas in the United States. His Highness affirmed that winning the title for the second time in a row bolsters the kingdom's status in international racing championships and affirmed the team's pioneering global status. The achievement also reflects the efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad and his support to the team. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the team's achievements, saying that it is an addition to the kingdom's motorsport achievements in general and to Bahrain One team in particular. He also praised the efforts of team member Steve Jackson, who displayed a distinguished performance, wishing him and the team continued success and progress. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for Zia Zainal chaired a meeting where she affirmed the Council's keenness to discuss the state budget in order to support the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Council discussed forming a parliamentary investigating committee regarding medical services provided by the Ministry of Health and for the pension funds. The Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar, participated virtually in the 18th Housing Minister's Meeting of the GCC. The meeting was chaired by the UAE's Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure and the current session's President, Hail bin Mohammed Al Mazrui, with the participation of the Secretary General of the GCC, Dr. Nayef Al Hajraf. 
Al Hamar said that Bahrain looks forward to hosting the next meeting in 2021. He stressed that the current circumstances require the development of the short and long term plans aimed at preserving the stability of this vital sector. Al Hamar indicated the need to continue and follow up on the decisions made in the joint executive program related to the joining housing work strategy to implement the initiatives and projects, overcome the challenges, and ensure the success of the providing a joint Gulf housing system. The Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain participated remotely in the meeting of the Council governing the Interparliamentary Union to elect a new president for the next session 2021-2024. to The Parliamentary Division was represented by the first Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohammed Fakhro, the second Deputy Chairwoman of the Shura Council, Jamila Ali Salman, the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs and National Defense and Security Committee at the Representatives Council, Mohammed al Bainain, the Deputy President of the Services Committee at the Shura Council, Hala Ramzi Fayez, Dr. Abdullah Dawadi, Shura Council member Ali Abdullah Al Aradi, and Fatma Al Qatari. The mechanism for electing the new president electronically was presented during the meeting with an emphasis on the secrecy and safety of the technical procedures in the election process. The GCC Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, held a meeting with the Arab Parliament Speaker, Adel Assoumi, in the presence of a number of officials. The meeting comes in the framework of the cooperation and coordination between the Arab Parliament and the General Secretariat of the Arab League regarding Arab joint action and discussing recent developments in the Arab world. Abul Ghait praised the role of the Arab Parliament in serving Arab nations' interests. The Arab Parliament Speaker praised the role of the GCC Secretary General and hailed the plans and strategies of the Arab Parliament to serve the political, economic and social issues, as well as human rights, the Palestinian cause and combating terrorism. He affirmed the importance of this cooperation to serve Arabs and support Arab joint action. Public Security Chief Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan inspected the site of the petrol leak at the Jafar fuel station in Umm Al Hassan. He followed up the operations and precautionary measures to ensure the general safety. He asserted that the source of the leak was discovered and dealt with through a cooperation between the civil defense teams and Bobco. Director General of Civil Defense said that teams of eight vehicles and 27 personnel were deployed shortly after receiving the case. He said that the safety procedures were taken, including securing the location and partially and temporary evacuation of the station and nearby areas. The risk level was evaluated and the Civil Defense act activated the emergency plans in cooperation with the main operations room, along with alerting response and ambulance teams, allocating shelter centers in the area and providing buses to transfer people in case of any developments. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation has sent an aid package as part of its efforts to support the brotherly country of Lebanon to reconstruct Beirut ports following the devastating August blast. The package included mobile caravan, wooden buildings and offices. The initiative was part of His Majesty the King's directives to continue providing aid to the brotherly people of Lebanon, as emphasized by the Secretary General of the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid. The RHF aid is part of the initiatives of the Kingdom to support Beirut following the devastating blast based on the distinguished brotherly relations between Bahrain and Lebanon. Following the blast, an RHF delegation led by Dr. Sayyid made an urgent visit to Lebanon to deliver the shipment of urgent relief aid containing necessary medical relief. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,604 with 278 recoveries, 278 registered new cases and one death. 90 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 185 are contacts of active cases and 3 are travel related. The deceased was a 68-year-old male citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions.